everyone and welcome to PBUMC on this beautiful, gorgeous day. Glad you could be here and we welcome on our online wish worshipers too. Uh, we're glad that you join us in any way um, as we lift our hearts and worship together. If you are visiting us, either new or been visiting, we just extend a very warm welcome to you and glad that you could come and join us today. So this is our second Sunday of Advent, and for those that like church history, Advent is actually the start of our church calendar year. It's uh, the birth of Jesus and actually starts our church calendar. So we light a candle each Sunday, and today the S family will be uh, leading us in lighting our Advent candle this morning. And we'll also be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion today as the first Sunday of the month. And so we encourage our online worshipers to gather a little meal and join us. Pastor Dottie will bless your meal as well as we all commune together. And then we let Jesus do the rest in that meal. So I invite you just to join our hearts together right now. Turn our focus in as we enter into worship and allow God to be with us. Will you join me as we open in prayer? Most high God, for you, nothing is impossible. Through a poor young woman in a small town, you gave birth to your realm of endless glory. By your Holy Spirit, fill us with new life and hope and overshadow us with your power and grace so that we, like Mary, might be your servants bearing witness to the promise of your word through Jesus Christ, who is coming to reign. Amen.
Okay, you are already standing. Thank you. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Thank you. Sorry. My soul magnifies the Lord. My God, my God the Savior. The Mighty One has great things. Holy is God's name. We gather here, wait, we gather to hear the stories of our ancient faith. We gather as a community to practice telling our stories to one another. In the beginning, God's spirit hovered over the waters of the deep. From the waters, God called, God called forth the earth and all its creatures. But God did not stop speaking. God's spirit did not stop moving. The angels, the heavenly messengers, came to Elizabeth and then to Mary. From the waters of their womb, God was calling forth new life. Who will believe this story? Elizabeth was too old. Mary was too young. The odds were impossible but their stories do not end in doubt. Elizabeth felt the baby within her kick and move. Mary heard the angel's promise of a sign, as a, excuse me, of a son, as a sign of God's favor with the oppressed. God is still speaking. God is still speaking. Mary ran to Elizabeth. Elizabeth received Mary's story with joy. When our story is heard, we feel seen and loved. These mothers nurtured and cared for one another in their time of mutual vulnerability. 
We gather to hear the stories of our ancient faith. Do we remember that in many ways God moves within the world? We gather together as a community to practice telling our stories to one another. We listen with expectation for the movement of God among us today. Amen. staying for the kids moment <gasps> I love it all the, our other kids can come up and join our graduated kids and now you <laughs>
Good morning. How are you guys? Can you guys can all scooch? Doing well. Thanks, Blakely. So, have any of you ever had really, really good news to share? Show of hands. Yes, sometimes. Have any of you ever waited for really good news or a surprise? Yes, okay, so I'm from Illinois and growing up we had something magical called a snow day. Do you guys know what that is? Some of you do. Let's look out over here. Show of hands for all of our transplants. Who knows what a snow day is? <gasps> yes. You've been to Washington, so you know. <laughs> you lived in Washington, so you've done it. So a snow day is when you would go to bed hoping that a blizzard would come so that you didn't have to go to school the next day. But you would wake up so early in the morning, earlier in fact, than you normally would for school to see if on the news your school was closed that day. So at like 6 a.m. you'd be waiting and waiting and waiting. And then you'd see your school go across and you'd go, yes, I can go back to bed. It's kind of funny, right? But we were so excited when that happened. So we got to see that great news actually on the news. What are some other ways that you guys like to see great news shared? Elliot. Um, by my friend. By your friend. You like to hear it from your friend. How else do we hear great news? Yeah, Charlie. By your family. What about anyone look for like TikTok or Facebook, Instagram, text message? Does anyone here still read the newspaper? <laughs> sort of, sometimes, no. I like it. So, this all reminds me of a story that we were talking about when we were lighting the Advent wreath. When Mary found out that she was going to be pregnant with Jesus, she went and told some great news to her cousin Elizabeth. And she had to actually go and tell her in person. And this news was so exciting that even Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist, they say that baby John the Baptist in her belly like flipped over with excitement. That's pretty great news. <laughs> so during Advent, we want to remember to share the great news of Jesus. So what are some things we can do during Advent to share great news or be light in the world? Any ideas? Yeah. Just tell people. Just tell people. I love it. Any other ways? Elliot. Never mind. Okay. Any other ways to share good news? I think our youth choir did some of it. What did they do today? You could sing about the great news. What else could we do? What do you do for your house around Christmas? Yeah, Elliot. Uh, you could decorate it. Yeah, we can decorate our houses to share the good news. And maybe we can just do an act of service for someone. Yeah, Amelia? Can you say it loud? You can give gifts to share the great news. Yeah, those are all great ways to share the great news that Jesus is here for us and was our greatest gift from God. So let's pray together. You can repeat after me, guys. Dear God, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Help us to share the good news of his birth so loud that all can listen. Amen. All right, we can head out to Sunday school, friends. <laughs>
As we wait with hope and anticipation for the coming of the Lord, we ask for your peace and mercy for ourselves and the world. For the church, may this time of Advent help everyone to prepare spiritually for the coming of our Savior. For nations in crisis, those at war, those suffering political turmoil or economic recession, that all may experience the peace and happiness of the coming season. For those who may find it hard to prepare a way for the Lord in their lives, that they may be given the gifts of knowledge and discernment. For all who have died, <clears throat> and for those whose anniversaries fall at this time, may they be raised to new and eternal life. Just as Mary looked forward with joy to the coming of the Christ child, may we follow her example and have renewal of joy in our hearts and awakening of our spirits this seasoning. Remind us of the peace we can access when we take time to still ourselves before you and remember that you are God. We thank you that you are both sovereign and gracious as we pray in unison the prayer your son Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I uh, invite the ushers to prepare uh, for this time of giving as I share just a few words. I think of this offering time as a time to give back to God, what God has generously given to me and to you personally and as the body of Christ. It's a time to be grateful and to give joyfully so the work of the church may flourish and that we might be a light that brings hope to a hurting world and to each other. Your monetary giving is an act of worship that we want to acknowledge openly and before God. May God's generosity inspire us all as we give. Our ushers will pass a plate, but you can also give electronically on, uh, through our website, pvumc.org, um, or our online viewers, you actually just have a tab on the screen that you can go to. Thank you.
Let us offer this before the Lord. God of mercy and grace, we pray that the gifts we offered this morning might be used to bring some compassion to the chaos that is our world. We give these gifts in love, hoping they will heal some of the hurting, and as they do, make the crooked road straight for the coming of the Christ. In Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Today's gospel reading comes from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 45. In this story, Mary receives the message from the angel Gabriel of her impending pregnancy. She accepts the news in gracious and humble obedience. Listen for the word of the Lord. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will, bring, he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord gave, will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen? since I haven't had sexual relations with a man. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be born holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And with a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Hoping that my microphone is on. There we go. I want to start by thanking everyone who's been a part of this service, and I'm sure I'll leave some people out, so just forgive me already. But um, the light bearers who brought the light in to start us, to reminding that the light of Christ comes before us. All the musicians that come every week and help us, uh, Josh plays keyboard, piano, and then all, all of you who bring music to our souls, we're so grateful, especially today for the, the youth, youth choir, youth bells, 
for Martha for reading the story for us today, for Kristen for the children's story, for Brenda for her part, for Ashley for leading, and for the S family today, Nikki, Eric, Evelyn, jo Jocelyn, and Charlie, who helped us light the Advent candle. You know, the whole service works because we are a community coming together, giving our parts. And today I'd like to especially um, thank Jeremy, who runs the sound. Actually, there's Jeremy back there, and I can't tell who else is there, but we have um, uh, folks who do our cameras for the online people. Who is it today? Can't see. Matt. Thank you, Matt. And I want to tell you something special about Jeremy today. Um, this week he had a baby that was born on Tuesday. Uh, a little... A little baby boy who is only 11 pounds, 4 ounces. <laughs> and so thank you, Jeremy, for being here. He's a little sleep deprived, but you know, that's uh, part of the... part of it. <laughs> so we are in a series called The Story. So during the Advent time, we're just going to look at what it means to tell this nativity story. And last week we talked about the prophets, the prophecy of Isaiah who who let us know that this was going to happen someday. And this week we're going to talk about the mothers, next week the fathers, after that the shepherds, and then on Christmas Eve we're going to talk about the baby. You see, I believe that our stories change the world, that Jesus used narrative and metaphor to get his message out. And if Jesus' way worked for his time, I'm pretty sure it'll work for our time as well. We know from research that stories can transform more than our knowledge or our information or rumors that stories can transform us. They get deep into our souls. Now, I've talked to a few people here about my preaching and different kinds of preaching, and I am a narrative preacher. You know, there are all, all kinds of preachers, uh, different venues than, that people utilize when they preach, but I was taught to be a narrative preacher. And so because I'm a narrative preacher, I've also chosen uh, to tell my own stories. Now, some people um, ask me, why do you tell your own stories? Why don't you tell other people's stories or other stories that are out there in the universe? Well, I tell my own stories because I know them the best. And, and I know the truth in those stories. I know how they, the, how they have changed me and, and, and how I've been uh, remade through the stories of my life. And my hope is that as I tell you my stories, that you will be able to connect with the stories that you have in your life, reflect on your own stories, and see where God has met you, and see how your story can change you. Truthfully, telling my own stories is a vulnerable way to preach, and yet I hope that, hope that you know, as I know, that God reaches us in our most vulnerable places. So this, sto this uh, series is called The Story because there's so much that happened in this story of the nativity. And because this story curates our life, it sets the foundation for our life, and because it takes more than one sermon to develop the depth of this story. My mother married my father uh, after she was pregnant with me. I didn't find that out until uh, I was much older, and my brother helped me count the months. <laughs> And uh, when I asked my mom about that, she reminded me that God does amazing things with us even when we don't follow society's rules, even when we don't, it doesn't seem like we're the, it's the best way, that God does amazing things with second best, third best, fourth best, etc. that God doesn't need that first best for good things to happen. And so, um, so she she uh, birthed me. She had already had three children. My father married a family with three children, and then I was on the way. God bless him. <laughs> and uh, she'd always embarrass me when she would tell me the stories of my pregnancy. Um, she, one of the stories she said was that every time she would go into church, my mom was Lutheran, and she'd go into the Lutheran church, and they had beautiful music, a lot like this music, organ music, but we would just walk into the church, my mom and me in utero, and I would do cartwheels in her abdomen every time she entered church. 
My mom loved to go to church, but she hated to go to church when she was pregnant with me because my excessive music would make her nauseous. And she said that was the only time in in my life I didn't really want to go to church because I knew that as soon as I stepped into the door, you would start doing your flips. Now, I heard this all my life, and my mom didn't know I was going to turn out to be a pastor. But when I went to seminary to be a pastor, my mom was one of the ones who was most surprised because, you know, women don't do those kinds of things. And, and, And yet my mom said, oh, now I get it. She said, that's a piece of the puzzle. That's why every time I walked into church, you would do your flips. She also gave me a name that meant gift of God. My name is Dorothea, (laughs) old-fashioned name. And she would remind me that I am her gift. Now, I was always embarrassed when she told these stories in front of other people. And my mom was a really amazing storyteller. And uh, and, and she always embarrassed me. But I secretly loved the stories that she told because her stories let me know that I was valued in her life. So what is your birth story? And who tells it to you? And how has it influenced you? And your children and your grandchildren, do you tell them on their birthday their birth story? Do you tell them why it matters that they are in the world? Because Our birth stories are important for us. They influence us. They focus us. Today's birth story comes from the view of women in the story, Elizabeth and Mary. They were cousins, but I like to think of Elizabeth as Mary's cousin aunt because she was a cousin of a far greater age, and so she acts more like an auntie. Elizabeth was older and had been unable to get pregnant. But finally, after all these years, God answered her prayer, and she was pregnant, and she carried a special baby that we would later come to know as John the Baptist, who is Jesus' cousin. So Elizabeth's husband at that time was a priest, Zechariah, and uh, his story is part of this story, too. We'll do that next week with the fathers. But if you've ever had a hard time getting pregnant... Or if you've ever been through birth through adoption or IVF, you will recognize the joy that Elizabeth felt when she found out that she was finally pregnant. After years of wondering if that dream of hers was never going to happen, suddenly she's not only pregnant, but in this moment in the story, she's six months pregnant. If you've ever been six months pregnant, you know you're pregnant. (laughs) You can't carry your body very well. You have to go to the bathroom every two minutes. You know you're pregnant. But Mary's story is a little different. You see, she was, she was a young girl, maybe as young as 12 or 13 years old. Now, just for a minute, if you can, remember what it was like to be 12 or 13 years old. You, you, you might have had your first period, but maybe not. Your body was getting taller, but you were still really, really awkward. Your emotions were all over the board, unable to control them. And you still needed your parents to protect you as even though you tried to act like we were adults. Remember 12 or 13? It's a hard stage. If you can imagine yourself at that age or remember yourself at that age, were you ready to have a baby? See, Mary had some additional problems. She was not married, though she was engaged. And she had not yet experienced her sexuality. And so when she had this encounter with the angel, she, did, she automatically believed that the angel, what the angel said, that God was going to bring a special child through her. But the question she had was a how question, like, how does this happen when, when I haven't even had my first encounter? And so she has a story that is a bit unreal, unnerving, and unsettling. And she's wondering, after this angel comes to her, if she really, if the angel is really, um, how this is going to really happen. So in those days, if you were pregnant out of wedlock and for her, being, being um, 
engaged is being in wedlock in their, their days. Uh, but her engaged to be could, could have um, brought charges against her where she could have been stoned. So it was a dangerous situation. So I can see Mary, I just imagine her, this part's not in the biblical text, but I can imagine her because she's a family girl running to her mama and telling mama what happened. Um, mama, can we talk? Uh, sure, honey, what's up? Well, I, 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 I saw an angel. Well, honey, maybe you were dreaming. <laughs> no, no, mama, I saw an angel. And the angel told me that I'm going to have a special child who will be who will be God's son. And Mama says, well, Mary, um, I'm sure that every child you have or any child you have will be special someday, and I will love him dearly, but he probably won't be God's son. Well, probably won't be a king. Mom, you're not listening to me. The angel visited me and said God would overshadow me, and Mom, I'm pregnant. Please don't tell Dad. And I can just see Ma Mary's mom, like, just sitting there for a while, like, did I hear her right? And then finally she blurts out, oh, 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 Mary, are you sure? Maybe you're just losing it. You're so young. What will we do? What will Joseph do to you? Oh, Mary, you must never tell this story to anyone. Don't tell them about the angel. I pray Joseph will be merciful to you. Your dad will have to have a talk with him. Did Joseph do anything to you? Can't you just hear Mary's mother worrying and fretting out loud, out loud for, her while, for a while and lost in her own world of pain and, and worry as a mama who, who does know how to worry well? I can hear her worry. Mary's mom must have continued to worry and fret until finally she came up with a solution, which is also what mamas do. Let's send Mary away to her older cousin Elizabeth. That way she can hide away there until the end of her pregnancy. That would work, right? Mary was glad to leave and to get out of her small town where everybody could tell what was happening and go to her cousin Elizabeth. She was always the kindest soul. She was her favorite cousin auntie. She could tell her anything without condemnation or disbelief. So when Mary arrives in the rural community where, where Elizabeth uh, lives, Elizabeth runs to her, and Elizabeth's child leaps in her womb at the sight of a young pregnant Mary. And Elizabeth feels herself filled with the Holy Spirit when she sees Mary, and she blurts out as part of her greeting, God has blessed you above all women. He has blessed the child that you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? It's kind of a weird greeting. But that's what came out of Elizabeth's mouth. This honor and praise for this this infant, this child that was going to be born. So finally, when they got that greeting over, they went inside, and I can imagine Elizabeth pulling out a cup of tea and sitting down with Mary, and Mary telling her everything that happened to her and how she had this encounter with an angel and the, the news that the angel gave to her. And then Elizabeth said, well, what did you say to the angel? And she said, well, I said, I, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Let it be with me just as you have said. So I don't know about you, but if God came and told me something that was a little bit out of the ordinary, my first response would probably not be, let it be with me just like you said. My first response might have been, are you sure? In fact, it has been over time. Are you sure, God? But Mary wasn't like that. Mary had a faith and a trust in her God that she was able to say, well, I don't understand what's going on, God, but let it be with me, just as you have said. Elizabeth responded to her with words of encouragement. 
And she said, happy is she who believes that the Lord would fulfill these promises to her. Now the part that Martha didn't read today, but it's the next section of the scripture, is called the Magnificat, which is, as is set to song today, but it's a praise that comes out, like a praise poem that comes out of Mary's mouth. And as she writes this praise poem, it, it, it's, we sing it as like this beautiful idea of God coming to earth. But if we could paraphrase what it means for today, that Magnificat, if you could paraphrase the words that are in it, this is what it might sound like to us today. God has shown the power of God's promise to people. God will lift up the lowly and tear down the proud and haughty. God will feed the hungry and send the callous rich ones away empty-handed. God will put victims of abuse and violence out of the sucking mud of inhumane and oppressive practices and restore them to beloved ones. And God has chosen me, a brown-skinned adolescent girl who is overlooked, overworked, and betrothed to be Joseph's wife as the vehicle to make this happen. You see, the Magnificat, the, the response Mary has to what God is doing in her life after she talks to her cousin, Auntie Elizabeth, is, is a song of revolution. It's a song where the powerful will be overturned and the lowly will be restored to mercy and to grace and to resources. We like to think of Mary as... Uh, uh, timid and kind and quiet and sweet, which a lot of people like to put females in those categories. <laughs> but she was none of that. She was courageous and bold and, and faithful and following God no matter what she faced in her future. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months, which probably means she stayed with Elizabeth until the birth of her baby, John. And as she stayed with her, they talked and they cooked and they shared and they sewed and uh, they hoped together. And Elizabeth's uh, husband and priest, the priest Zechariah, was unable to get a word in edgewise because, well, I'll tell you why next week. He could only listen to them. Listen to them, share their joy, and wonder over what was happening in their bodies. And I can hear during those conversations Mary asking Elizabeth how to handle all the people who would be talking behind her back, who are already talking behind her back. And I can hear Elizabeth saying to her, Oh, honey, don't you even worry about them. They've been talking about me being barren for decades, and look at me now. And then I can hear Elizabeth just laughing out loud, that joyous, guttural laugh of delight because she's pregnant. I can imagine the ways they talk together and encourage each other, as women do. Elizabeth gave Mary a foundation of strength for the lonely road that she'd be walking when Mama Mary would have to protect her son from the evil king who wanted to kill all boys her son's age. She would have to protect her son even as far as leaving their, their country and becoming refugees in Egypt. And Mama Mary would have to watch him at a very young age, about the age she is now actually, teaching the elders of the, of the church. And Mama Mary would have to watch him as he chose mission over family. And Mama Mary would have to see the crowds that followed him and the times he wouldn't even eat or sleep because of the crowds. And Mama Mary would have to stand and see him accused and tortured and killed because they thought he was trying to be an earthly king. And Mama Mary would have her broken heart uh, dragged through the mud through the end of her life until she saw him die. And yet he rose not to be king of the country, but to be the saving king of the world. It was 
cousin auntie Elizabeth that gave Mama Mary that strength to persevere and the faith to stay true to what she knew was good and right and of God. I was wondering as I read the story if you are an Elizabeth who harbors faith and brings people in and listens to their story and restores them to foundation and to encouragement and sends them out to be who they are in the world. Are you an Elizabeth? Or I was wondering, maybe you're a Mary who, who uh, I don't know, who has courage, even though no one understands, even though she doesn't understand her life, has courage. What I want you to do is remember the reason you were born. Many times in my life, I have wanted to quit being a pastor. I mean, regularly. But then I remember my call. I have a specific call story, which you have heard pieces of. And that call story pulls me back. But the other story I remember is my mama's story of me leaping in her womb every time I entered church. And so I remain. And I do the work of the local church because that is part of my call. But I know in your life, you have leaped for joy at the knowledge of being in the right place, in the right space, in the right time, because God has set you in that place. I don't know where that is for you, but I know God created you for something. So my hope for you this week is that you search your soul and find the places where God is leaping inside of you and remain there. And don't let anyone take you away from that space. Because God is doing a work in you, even you. Amen. God, we are so aware of the ways that you change us and of the ways that, that you call us. We are aware of those people who have helped us along the way and those who, who have given us foundation. Help us to be aware of the leaping places in our lives and to lean into them. And all God's people said, Amen. And now the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, our creator, creator of the heaven and earth. You call all people to follow your paths of justice and peace, beating their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. In the light of your holy word, we look up for the day when the nation shall not lift up the sword against nation or learn war anymore. Therefore, with the entire company of heaven, and with all your people on the earth who live in this hope, we praise you and join you in their never-ending hymn. are you and blessed is Jesus Christ your son for he is Emmanuel God with us fulfilling the expectations of the prophets he healed the blind and the lame cleansed the lepers opened the ears of the deaf raised the dead and brought good news to the poor through his life death and resurrection you manifest your new covenant with humankind 
and through the church of his disciples you give testimony to the power of your salvation for the world. For on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of all your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a living sacrifice in unity with Christ's offering for the world as we declare Christ has risen. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. O oh God, we ask that you'd send your Holy Spirit on all of us who are gathered here out of love for you and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let the bread we break be a true fellowship in the body of Christ. Let the cup we share be a true participation in the new covenant of your blood. And by your spirit, empower us to be Christ for the world, serving in his name until the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea through your son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit and in your holy church. For all the glory, all the honor is yours now and forever. If the communion servers would please come forward, we are going to invite you to go to any station that is near to you and then uh, receive your cup and bread and then go back to your seat. After the song is over, we will, we will open and take, partake together.
And now if you would open up the first layer, this is the bread of life. You can break it, given for you. And then open up the second layer. This is the cup of forgiveness, given for you. Thank you, God, for choosing to be Emmanuel, to come to live with us so that we can be a light to your world. Amen. We have a few announcements. It's always an exciting season of Advent. Today, the gift of life, we have the uh, blood drive going on, and I think there's a few spots. If you are able, we invite you out and see the truck there. And uh, Christmas Wonderland, it's this Saturday. That's our fun event for all the family. Let's see, we have, it's three to five. It's free. And all ages, like miniature golf, pony rides, ornament making, you know, if you've been there, it's fun. So grandkids, littles, older, everybody, there's something. Um, and then uh, next Sunday, we are ushering our traditional, annual, amazing PVUMC Christmas concert. Uh, it's titled Joyful All Ye Nations. So it's next Sunday, 6 to 7.30, and of course, followed by wonderful desserts down in the Fellowship Center as we just come together to start and uh, be in the middle of our beautiful season of Christmas. And then two Sundays from now, that's December 19th, we have a service called Quietude. So this will be an evening of serenity, music, peace, spoken word, and this will be in the chapel, and that'll be at 5.30. That's on December 19th, and we'll be having beautiful acoustic music performed by our Ignite band and vocalists. So I hope something in there grabs you and come and join the season together as we celebrate this season together. I receive the benediction from God, the blessing as you leave this place. 
Go from here knowing that God is with you. That Emmanuel came to be with us so that our lives can be changed by the story of nativity and by your stories. And take the places in your lives where you need to provide space for others and listen well and encourage. And to take the places that you need to rise up and have courage in your soul to follow what God has called you to do, do that. Because our world needs you. Our will, world needs to know the Jesus that you know. So go from this place. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, amen.